Today's homework problems had you working on the system that regulates metabolic rate with the thyroid hormones. This first one was a mammal that has a diet that's low in iodine, and how would that affect the amounts of T4, T3, reverse T3 and T2, and TRH and TSH? So in the thyroid gland, there's less iodine moving in, so that's slower. That means the creation of T3 and T4 is going to be lower, so there's going to be less T3, less T4. The consequence of that is that there is going to be more TRH. Why? Because with less T4, we have less feedback of T4 on TRH neurons. So with less feedback, we have more TRH. That gives us more TSH. And what's happening is this negative feedback system is trying to get all the iodine available for use. So that will compensate partly, but not completely, because there's not enough iodine. But it will scavenge more of the iodine that is available. The second question was an adult human who has low T3. They're taking thyroid hormone as a medication. They wind up with a serious kidney infection. The kidneys are processing one third the normal amount of fluid. So showing over here, here's the T3, also reverse T3, T4, and T2. That's been processed in part through the liver. So they're taking T3. That is being partially degraded to T2 in the liver, but a major way of clearing T3 is also in the kidney. And so if we have one third, oops, one third the fluid entering the kidney, that means that uh, instead of the normal amount of uh, T3 being excreted, that two thirds of that, what would have been excreted, is actually being retained. So the kidney is a major clearance method for thyroid hormone. That means that if the kidney is only clearing at one-third efficiency, that T3 is going to build up. The person should take their medication less frequently so the body doesn't accumulate. Of course, that's hard to assess how much kidney um, uh, reduction there is, and then how much of the clearance is happening in the liver versus the kidney. So that higher dose may not be safe, um, but it wouldn't necessarily be easy to predict what kind of a change to make. Here's another version, here is the liver, converting the T3 dose, or the T3 or T4 dose, into these alternatives. That is being excreted, but we have more coming back to the bloodstream, because the blood is coming in, but only one third is processed. So one third and two thirds. That means there's less thyroid hormone excreted. Thyroid hormone levels would build up, and so the thyroid dose might be safer to be lowered. Number three, an individual human has a mutation in a regulatory region of the transporter that moves T4 into TRH neurons. Mutation causes lower metabolic rate. So if it causes lower metabolic rate, and it's the transporter that's moving T4 in, uh, and T4 inhibits TRH. So lower metabolic rate means that we've got less TRH, which means we must be moving in more T4. So where we once might have had just one transporter, we now have two transporters. We have twice the transporters inhibiting TRH. So it's a regulatory region mutation that increases the expression of these transporters. So we get less TRH, and through this pathway we also get less TSH. And with less TSH, less TSH binding here in the thyroid, we're going to produce, remove in less iodine, and we're going to produce less T3 and T4. Uh, and of course, what we have is going to be excreted. The result is going to be less T3 and T4 than normal, 
and lower metabolic rate. Here's another simpler version just showing that because T4 is inhibiting this cell, in this case the proposal is, not the way it actually works, but the proposal is that T4 is directly binding to a potassium channel. Here is the potassium moving out, and this is a logical hypothesis, so this is just fine. And if there's more uh, T4, then we're going to have more of this, we get less TRH, and metabolic rate will go down. The last one was a common treatment for hyperthyroidism, and overactive thyroid is to have it removed. That means that person must take thyroid hormone, and it turns out that a dose of T4 once per day is better than treatment of taking T3 once per day. The dose of T3 causes a rapid rise in metabolic rate, and often a rapid heartbeat, and then a fast decline. And T4, on the other hand, gives a slow rise in metabolic rate, never reaches as high, and then has a slow decline. So what might be the cause of the difference? <clears throat> well, with T3, we have an immediate effect on any cells. And so that's a rapid effect of the dose of T3. And then that T3 is also going to be excreted and also broken down in the liver. And so we get that T3 has a pretty immediate effect and it's gonna be excreted and cleared pretty rapidly. So a large initial effect and then fairly rapid clearance. On the other hand, if we have T4, then that high dose of T4 needs to be converted to T3. And this is actually a rate limiting step. So a lot, the T4 is gonna take a long time to be converted slowly to T3. So we get a steady supply of T3 instead of a sudden peak that steady supply maintains a steady metabolic rate and then it's steadily excreted but as it's being excreted our T4 keeps being converted to T3 to replace it. So T3 is in high concentrations and cells that need them, that need them T3 will be broken down and excreted um, in the liver and the kidney. On the other hand T4 is going to be steadily and relatively slowly converted into T3 Therefore, there are controlled amounts of T3 present in the cells and controlled amounts excreted. Here's a simpler version that also captures the same point. Uh, it's just going to be much slower to have the T4 that needs to be converted to T3. Uh, and so you're going to get a slower rise in metabolic rate. This person also should have pointed out that uh, the effect of, of excretion, but I accepted this one as well. That captures the idea.